Hi, this is Tom from zerotofinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through gallstones. And you can find written notes on this topic at zerotofinals.com slash gallstones or in the general surgery section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Gallstones are small stones that form within the gallbladder. The stones form from concentrated bile in the bile duct. Most stones are made of cholesterol. Gallstones may be completely asymptomatic. They can also cause pain and lead to complications such as acute cholecystitis, acute cholangitis and pancreatitis. Gallstones blocking the drainage of the pancreas, i.e. the pancreatic duct, result in pancreatitis. Let's talk about the basic anatomy. The right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct leave the liver and join together to become the common hepatic duct. The cystic duct from the gallbladder joins to the common hepatic duct halfway along its length. The pancreatic duct from the pancreas joins with the common hepatic duct further along. When the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct join, they become the ampulla of Veta, which opens into the duodenum. The sphincter of Odi is a ring of muscle surrounding the ampulla of Veda that controls the flow of bile and pancreatic secretions into the duodenum. Let's talk through some key definitions. There are some key definitions that it is helpful to be familiar with that relate to the gallbladder and gallstones. Cholestasis refers to blockage of the flow of bile. Cholelithiasis refers to when gallstones are present. Cholidocholithiasis refers to when gallstones are in the bile duct. Biliary colic refers to intermittent right upper quadrant pain that's caused by gallstones irritating the bile ducts. Cholecystitis refers to inflammation of the gallbladder. Cholangitis refers to inflammation of the bile ducts. Gallbladder empyema refers to pus inside the gallbladder. Cholecystectomy refers to surgical removal of the gallbladder. And cholecystostomy refers to inserting a drain into the gallbladder. Let's talk about the risk factors for gallstones. The four main risk factors for gallstones can be remembered with the four F's mnemonic. Fat, meaning patients that are obese. Fair, meaning patients with fair hair and fair skin. Female, meaning female patients. And 40, meaning middle-aged patients. Let's talk about the presentation. Patients with gallstones may be completely asymptomatic, so they may not have any symptoms of the gallstones. If the gallstones are causing symptoms, the typical symptom is biliary colic. Biliary colic is caused by stones temporarily obstructing the drainage of bile from the gallbladder. The stone may get lodged at the neck of the gallbladder or in the cystic duct and cause blockage of drainage and pain and then when it falls back into the gallbladder the symptoms resolve. This causes symptoms of severe colicky epigastric or right upper quadrant pain. This is often triggered by meals, particularly high fat meals, and it lasts between 30 minutes and 8 hours. And it may be associated with nausea and vomiting. Alternatively, patients may present with complications of gallstones, such as acute cholecystitis, 
acute cholangitis, obstructive jaundice if the stone is blocking the ducts, or pancreatitis. A tom tip for you. Fat entering the digestive system causes a chemical called cholecystokinin, or CCK, to be secreted from the duodenum. Cholecystokinin triggers contraction of the gallbladder, which leads to biliary colic. Patients with gallstones and biliary colic are advised to avoid fatty foods to prevent CCK release and gallbladder contraction. Exam questions may test this mechanism, so it's worth remembering, particularly the link with the chemical cholecystokinin. Let's talk about liver function tests. Firstly, bilirubin. Bilirubin normally drains from the liver through the bile ducts and into the intestines. If the liver function tests show a raised bilirubin, which is called jaundice, and the patient has pale stools and dark urine, this represents an obstruction to the flow within the biliary system. Bilirubin is not able to flow out of the bile duct. Obstruction may be caused by a gallstone in the bile duct or by an external mass pressing on the bile duct, for example a cholangiocarcinoma or a tumour of the head of the pancreas. Next, alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline phosphatase, or ALP, is a non-specific marker. It's an enzyme that originates in the liver, the biliary system and the bones. And abnormal results can either indicate a liver, a biliary or a bone problem. ALP is also secreted by the placenta during pregnancy, so pregnant women may have a raised ALP result. In the context of gallstones, a raised ALP result is consistent with biliary obstruction or obstruction of flow of bile through the biliary system if it's also accompanied by right upper quadrant pain and or jaundice. A raised alkaline phosphatase can also be caused by liver or bone malignancy, primary biliary cirrhosis, Paget's disease of the bone, and many other things. Next, aminotransferases. Alkaline aminotransferase, or ALT, and aspartate aminotransferase, or AST, are enzymes that are produced in the liver. They're helpful as markers of hepatocellular injury, or damage to the liver cells. In the context of gallstones, when there's cholestasis or blockage of bile through the bile ducts, ALT and AST can increase slightly, but there will be a much more significant rise in ALP or alkaline phosphatase. And this is described as an obstructive picture, referring to the obstruction of flow through the bile ducts. Alternatively, if the ALT and the AST level are high in comparison to the ALP level, this is more indicative of a problem inside the liver with hepatocellular injury, and this is described as a hepatitic picture, as opposed to an obstructive picture. Let's talk about the use of ultrasound. An ultrasound scan is a useful first-line investigation for symptoms of gallstone disease, for example abdominal pain, right upper quadrant pain and jaundice. An ultrasound scan is the most sensitive initial imaging test for gallstones. CT scans are not good at identifying gallstones or biliary disease. The use of an ultrasound scan is limited by the patient's weight, for example if they're obese gas filling the bowel that might obstruct the view and any discomfort that the patient experiences from the ultrasound probe. Let's talk about ultrasound scan findings. An ultrasound scan can be helpful in identifying gallstones in the gallbladder, gallstones in the ducts, 
Dilatation of the bile duct, which may be caused by a distal obstruction causing the proximal bile duct to swell up. And remember that the normal diameter of the bile duct is less than 6 millimeters. Acute cholecystitis, where it may be possible to see a thickened gallbladder wall, stones or sludge in the gallbladder and fluid surrounding the gallbladder. And it can also be used to assess the pancreas and the pancreatic duct. Let's talk about magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography. A magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, or MRCP, is an MRI scan with a specific protocol that produces a detailed image of the biliary system. This is a very sensitive and specific test for biliary tree disease, such as stones in the bile duct and malignancy. An MRCP scan is used in a number of scenarios for gaining a detailed picture of the biliary system, such as identifying biliary strictures or congenital abnormalities. With gallstone disease, MRCP is typically used to investigate further if the ultrasound scan does not show stones in the bile duct, but there is bile duct dilatation or raised bilirubin, which suggests an obstruction in the bile duct. The MRCP scan will give a detailed view showing where the obstruction is in the bile duct. Next, let's talk about endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. An endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, or ERCP, involves inserting an endoscope down the esophagus, past the stomach, to the duodenum, and the opening of the common bile duct, or the sphincter of Oddi. This gives the operator access to the biliary system. The main indication for ERCP is to clear stones that are blocking the bile ducts. An ERCP procedure allows the operator to inject contrast and take x-rays to visualise the biliary system and diagnose pathology, for example stones or strictures in the bile duct. Perform a sphincterotomy procedure which involves making a cut in the sphincter of Oddi if the sphincter is dysfunctional and blocking the flow of bile. Clear stones from the ducts. Insert stents to improve the bile duct drainage, for example if there's strictures or tumours. And take biopsies from tumours in the local area, for example cholangiocarcinomas or pancreatic tumours. The key complications of an ERCP procedure are excessive bleeding, cholangitis, which is infection in the bile ducts, and pancreatitis. Next let's talk about CT scans. CT scans are less useful for looking at the biliary system and for gallstones. They may be used to look for differential diagnoses, for example pancreatic head tumours, and also to assess complications such as perforation and abscesses. Let's talk about management. Patients who are asymptomatic but have gallstones may be treated conservatively with no interventions. Patients with symptoms or complications of gallstones are treated with a cholecystectomy, which is the surgical removal of the gallbladder, provided that they're fit for surgery. Let's talk in more detail about cholecystectomy. A cholecystectomy involves the surgical removal of the gallbladder. This is indicated where patients are symptomatic of gallstones or the gallstones are leading to complications, such as acute cholecystitis. Stones that are in the bile duct can be removed either before the procedure by an ERCP or during surgery. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy or keyhole surgery is preferred to open cholecystectomy. An open cholecystectomy involves a right subcostal cocher incision. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy has less complications and a faster recovery time. The complications of a cholecystectomy include bleeding, infection, pain and scars. Damage to the bile ducts, which can include leakage and strictures. 
stones left inside the bowel duct, damage to the bowel, blood vessels and other organs in the local area, the risks of anaesthetic, venous thromboembolism such as deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism, and a condition called post-cholecystectomy syndrome. Post-cholecystectomy syndrome involves a group of non-specific symptoms that can occur after a cholecystectomy. These symptoms may be caused by changes in the flow of bile after the removal of the gallbladder. Symptoms often improve with time and these symptoms include diarrhoea, indigestion, epigastric or right upper quadrant pain and discomfort, nausea, intolerance of fatty foods and flatulence. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.